Okay, let's sketch the graph of a rational function. Now this one's already started out as being um, factored for us, which is kind of nice. Gonna uh, save us a little bit of time so we don't have to factor it ourselves. Basically what we're gonna do is collect some information about this graph, y-intercept, x-intercept, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptote, if we have any of that, and put it all together on a nice graph. So this shouldn't be too bad. Let's start out with our y-intercept. As we know, uh, finding a y-intercept, what that entails is plugging in a zero for your x values. So zero plus two, zero minus three, over zero plus one squared, over zero minus two. Um, same as it's been for a long time, right? Y-intercepts are when x equals zero. From here, it's a little matter of simplifying down. So we have one squared is gonna be one multiplied by negative two. Looks like this is going to be negative six over negative two or three for our y intercept. Uh, the ordered pair is zero, three if you like. Okay, next up intercepts, x intercepts or zeros or roots, whatever we'd like to call these. These come from when the numerator equals zero. Okay, so when the numerator is going to equal zero, it's already factored for us. So we can kind of go through one, one factor at a time and think to ourselves, what do I plug in for this x to make just this factor equal zero? So we'd say we have x intercepts, or sometimes we say zeros or roots at negative two for the first factor, positive three for the other factor. Next, uh, for zeros, we sometimes want to look at multiplicities. So multiplicity, what that's indicating is what exponent that factor is raised to. So the negative two came from the x plus two, which is raised to the first power. So we say multiplicity of one. The three came from the x minus three, again, raised to the first power. So we'd say multiplicity of one. Now, even multiplicities, these are gonna to touch the x-axis and come back the same direction. But odd multiplicities like both of these, the ones, are going to cross the x-axis and I'll just say both of them cross because they both have an odd multiplicity. What that means is we're gonna go across the x-axis to the other side um, you know, as we, we hit this x-intercept. Next up, vertical asymptotes. These generally occur whenever the denominator equals zero. So again, with factored form, this is kind of handy that we can just kind of go factor by factor and say to ourselves, if I plugged in a negative one for the first x, x negative one plus one is going to make zero. So we'd say negative one is going to be a vertical asymptote. And then for our second factor, we can say positive two if we plugged it in there. Now, the other thing you should probably check is we don't have any removable discontinuities here or holes in the graph because we don't have any factors that pair up between numerator and denominator that are the exact same. All right, for lack of a better terminology, I'm also gonna go ahead and say, let's list out their multiplicities. So what I mean by that is what exponent that factor that they came from is raised to. So the negative one came from the x plus one, I'd say a multiplicity of two, very similar to what we were doing over there with x intercepts. And then two came from the second factor. I'd say the x minus two factors raised to the first power. So I'm gonna go ahead and say it has a multiplicity of one. Now these actually tell us some information about our graph as well, similar to what our x-intercepts uh, and their multiplicities told us about the graph. What these are gonna tell us is we have vertical asymptotes at negative one and positive two. Our multiplicities are gonna tell us on the other side of that vertical asymptote, is it gonna be at the same side or on the opposite side, uh, thinking, going up or going down. So a multiplicity of two, an even multiplicity, I'm gonna go ahead and say that means the same side. Whereas an odd multiplicity, I'm gonna say that means the opposite side. And I'll show you what I mean as far as what those directions are gonna give us on our graph in just a second. Last thing we wanna do is um, figure out the horizontal asymptote if we have one. So to find this, we wanna compare degrees of numerator and denominator. Okay, so as we compare the degrees, we can kind of add together multiplicities because this is factored. If you were to multiply out the numerator, we would have x times x or an x squared. Same thing as if you add these multiplicities together, one plus one makes two, so you can say degree two for our numerator. For our denominator, we would actually have three copies of x, two from this first set of parentheses, and then one from our second set, or add together these multiplicities, two plus one is gonna make degree three. 
Okay, so in comparing our degrees, our denominator is larger than our numerator. So from our rules, that tells us that we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero at the x-axis. Now I'm not gonna draw that in um, to our graph because it's at the axis. Now, if this had been moved off the axis, we'd indicate it with a dashed line. We just have to remember at the extremes as we go off, off to the right-hand side and way off to the left-hand side, we're gonna get close to the x-axis. That's what that's gonna tell us. Now let's put all this information together on the graph. So we had a y-intercept at three. I'm gonna go ahead and put that point on there. We had zeros or x-intercepts at negative two and positive three. So negative two, point on our graph. Positive three is gonna be a point on our graph. We had vertical asymptotes at negative one and positive two. So I'm gonna indicate those with vertical dashed lines. So negative one and positive two. And we're not gonna actually get points on our graph on these vertical asymptotes because they're excluded from our domain, right? They make the denominator equal zero. All right, so from here, where I would start my graphing, now that I've kind of included everything, is let's begin at this y-intercept because it's not on the x-axis. Now, if I start here and start graphing, if I move to the left, first of all, um, when I get to this vertical asymptote, I have to make a choice. I can't cross it, so I either have to go up or I have to go down when I approach it. Um, this shouldn't be a question because we don't have any x-intercepts in this region between this point we know is on our graph and there are no x-intercepts between that point and the vertical asymptote. So you can kind of think of this as a wall at our x-axis, right? There are no x-intercepts or like gates, doors to go through, so there's no way to cross over the x-axis um, because there's no x-intercept. We already identified all those zeros or x-intercepts, so we're really, really limited that the only logical thing to do is when I get close to this vertical asymptote, I have to go up. Not actually crossing that, simply going up, getting infinitely close to it. Now, if I were to start at our y-intercept and kind of move to the right-hand side, I'm gonna to get to another vertical asymptote again at two. I'm gonna to have to make a decision. Do I go up when I get there or do I go down when I get there? Again, what you wanna do is you wanna look at the x-axis and we don't have any x-intercepts in this portion of the graph. So there's not gonna be a door or a gate or a way to get through the x-axis. It's kind of like a wall that's just stuck. All right, so we don't know exactly what goes on on the graph. Maybe it goes down a little bit, but when we get to this vertical asymptote, we are very, very limited that we have to go up when we approach that. Just because there's no x-intercept on the x-axis in this portion of the number line. All right, now what's gonna happen on the other sides of these vertical asymptotes? Let's start at two, where we just finished up. We said that it had a multiplicity of one, so we're gonna to change to the opposite side of the x-axis. So what I mean by that is we finished up by going up towards positive infinity on this side of that vertical asymptote at two. Because we had an odd multiplicity, we're gonna start at the opposite side Basically like this went up, we're gonna start at the bottom here on the other side of that vertical asymptote. And then I'm gonna come up and I have to get to my x-intercept or zero. Now for that zero at three down here, we said multiplicity of one, so it's gonna cross over to the other side of the x-axis. So go to the other side of the x-axis. And then at the very extreme there, remember we always get close to any horizontal asymptotes. So we said we had a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero or the x-axis. So I'm gonna just go ahead and say that our graph gets close to the x-axis out here. Hopefully that looks like it's getting closer and closer to the x-axis. It's not actually gonna cross the x-axis. All right, next up to the other side, on the left-hand side of this vertical asymptote at negative one. For that vertical asymptote at negative one, we said it had a multiplicity of two. So we stay on the same side of the x-axis. So what I mean by that is because this finish going up, we're gonna start at the top as well on the other side of this vertical asymptote. So it's gonna start at the other side, but at the top, we're gonna to come down here and make sure we hit our x-intercept. That x-intercept or zero, we said had a multiplicity of one, as you can see down here on the bottom. So we're gonna to cross to the other side of the x-axis 
So we're going to take this across the x-axis and then we again have to finish up at the extremes by getting close to our horizontal asymptote. Our horizontal asymptote was at y equals zero or the x-axis. So I'm putting it all together and notice that I get closer to the x-axis as I go further out to the left-hand side. So that's basically the process for graphing any of these rational functions. Hope this helps out. I'll make one more example of this at least to uh, get you moving in the right direction. I know it's a brand new concept, but take your time, collect all the information and put it together. Good luck.